Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different Swell. Well. And for today's vlog, I'm going to be showing you guys my audio interview I did with uh, Nigel Beckles, excuse me, Nigel Beckles, a UK author and podcast host a while back. Um, I was so excited. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. This was one of my first interviews I had did with an, a UK uh, host, a podcast host. So I was really excited um, to talk with him about my new book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift? which is available on our website now at differencewell.net. So once you get done with this video and you like, share, comment, or subscribe, one of the four, uh, you're going to head over to differencewell.net and you're going to get your copy of What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift. But for now, enjoy our audio interview that we have with Mr. Nigel Beckles, and then I'll come back on once it's done and I'll talk with you guys again. Welcome back to my Interesting Conversations with Interesting People podcast series. My guest for this episode is the CEO of Third Eye Entertainment and also an author, American Different. Hi Different, welcome to my podcast series. How are you? Hey Nigel, how are you? Thank you for having me. I'm very well, thank you. So where do you reside at the moment? Well, I'm from Houston, Texas. It's where I live. Did you grow up there or elsewhere? Yeah, I grew up in Houston, but I'm, a, I'm an avid traveler. I've traveled all over the world just before the pandemic and even during the pandemic. So I understand that you became homeless at 11 years old. How did yes. you get out of that experience? By God's grace, you know, it was all due to him. At the age of 11, I ended up on the streets with my family and for three years it stayed that way. But at the age of 14, I was secretly placed in foster care. And within that time, I had discovered that the state of Texas pays for foster kids who age out of care. They pay for their tuition to college. And so a light bulb went out in my head and I decided to use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts and decided to stay in CPS for four years. And I aged out of care. And within that, I was able to go to college at Sam Houston State University and ended up getting multiple degrees. So which qualifications did you obtain? So as I stated, I went to Sam Houston State University. I became a member of the Phi Chi Theta Business Fraternity. I graduated with my BA in International Business. I have two minors in Business Communication and Economics, as well as I have my Master's Degree in Entrepreneurship, and I'm also a Texas real estate agent. Well, congratulations on those. You're also interested in therapy. So how did you become interested in that topic? Through the midst of all my accomplishments and achievements in life and with my tough upbringing, coming up from a traumatized childhood, it spilled over into my adulthood and with all the accomplishments and achievements I had, I still had demons to battle and I was blessed with so many opportunities and squandered them. And it was just due to the fact that, you know, I wasn't used to having good things, you know, chaos, it was normal to me. And so when good things were presented to me, for me, it was too good to be true. And so I squandered them. It spilled over into my adulthood and to the point to where I was messing up every opportunities I had to, you know, become successful. And it was one opportunity that I squandered and made me just really just face the fact that, you know, face it the truth about myself that I needed to go and fix my inner issues. And so with that being said, I took myself to therapy and dismissed that notion that, you know, black people don't do therapy, we don't talk about our issues. And I started talking about my issues, you know, with my therapist and, and within doing so, he encouraged me to, you know, channel that negative energy into a positive energy. And with that being said, you know, a year later, we're being stuck in, you know, the house during the pandemic, I written this book. And so that's where, you know, the mental health and therapy takes part in, you know, my life and helping me out for the good. It saved my life and it's a big part of my, my business and what Third Eye ENT is about. Well, you've suffered with depression in the past. How long did that last for? Oh, I mean, depression comes and goes. You can't measure, you know, how long you're depressed or why you're depressed or when you're depressed. I mean, I'm depressed right now, if you will, if I'm being honest, you know, I just suffered another loss. He wasn't family, but he was like family. I must say, you know, rest in peace to my coach, Saul Solis, you know, passed away a couple of days ago due to COVID. This is the fourth person alone that I, I've had to say goodbye to this year. And with that in itself, it's caused so much depression to where it keeps me in therapy. And, you know, it's where I have to talk about those issues. And so anybody out there that's listening, that's, you know, dealing with depression like me, 
I will say this, you know, it's okay not to be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. You know, go get help. Don't feel ashamed about it. Coming up, you know, I was brought up in a, in a, in a culture that, you know, we were taught that mindset of what goes on in this house stays in this house. And so, you know, coming up, I just wasn't able to express myself and, and how, you know, I, I naturally felt and it spilled over into my adulthood and that affected me. And so it wasn't until, like I said, you know, I just said, you know, forget that I'm going to go get help. Man. I'm going to go fix my issues. I'm going to go to therapy and be proud of it. And so I'm a living witness. It helps, if you will. Whatever, you know, it takes for you to fix your inner issues, do it. Whether it be, you know, praying or meditating, you know, talking to a therapist, a family member, friends, picking up some type of hobby, you know, do it because in the end, in the long run, you'll be grateful for it. You know, I know I am. It saved my life. Well, earlier you mentioned Black people not necessarily liking going to therapy. Why do you think some Black people are resistant to the idea of therapy? I think it is because of the way that we were brought up. For me personally, pretty sure it's others out there that can relate. Just, you know, what we were taught as, you know, youngin, that mindset again, you know, what goes on in this house stays in this house. Somebody in your family touched you inappropriately, you know, even though you talked about it, you went and told somebody. But half the time, most of the time, you know, it just got swept under the rug. You know, people pretend like it didn't happen. And so those type of examples are things, you know, when you learn in your childhood grows into your adult. That's the issue, in my opinion, you know, it's what we what we've been taught. You know, what we've been conditioned to, you know, we don't talk about those issues or we made to feel, you know, ashamed by it. And that's also a heavy issue, you know, within black men, you know, the way they've been brought up, they can't show weakness. See, they, men don't cry. And so a lot of that rage, that unchecked rage from their childhood spills over into their adulthood. And then you have that angry black man. I think that's what it is. It's what we've been instilled as a child. And so what I have vowed to do before I have kids is that when I have kids, I'm going to be the one to allow my kids to express themselves if they're you know, not feeling happy or something that's going on with them. I'm going to hear them out and help them out in the best way that I can. Can't change by what happened in the past, but you can change you know, what happens in the future by working on the now. That's my opinion. Well, you're the CEO of your own company. Mm -hmm. So when did you start your company? What's it called and what does it do? Yes, my company is called Third Eye Entertainment LLC. And it was actually started on accident. It started being stuck in the house after I wrote the book. I started in June 2020. And afterwards, I finished around 2020, December 2020. And I was talking with my lawyer. And she was telling me how much she liked the book and, you know, how well she thought it was going to do. And then she asked the question, what's the name of your business? And I'm like, huh? What do you mean? I kept telling her my book, like the title of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. And I'm, she was like, no, I don't think you understand what's the name of your business. I told her I didn't understand. I don't have a business, basically told her. And she was like, well, in order to sell a product to the public, you have to have a business. Therefore, they come after you. They can't sue you for your personal gains, only for your business-wise. And so from December to March of this year, I had to learn and gain all types of knowledge about, you know, the Texas rules and regulations of operating a business here and also being spiritually in tune and, and praying and, and meditating and talking with God and asking him going to do this and form this business. What is this business going to be about? And that's where third eye came from, you know, being spiritually in tune with my third eye. And you asked the question what my business is about. Third Eye Entertainment is a company that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services that educates, inspires, and entertains at once. We offer written and video material touching on issues that are considered taboo in today's society such as injustice, systemic racism, uh, LGBTQ issues, women's rights, voters' rights, child advocacy. We talk about sex trafficking, mental health, suicide prevention. And with that being said, the first project that we have is my new book coming out, What Else? A Controversial Paradigm Shift. Well, you mentioned your book. When was it published? So it's actually coming out this month and it's going on pre-sale. So why did you choose those particular topics for your book? What inspired me to write this book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift? Well, first off, you know, when the death of George Floyd occurred, being from the same place he's from, I actually, during a part of my childhood, spent some time in there for the places he's from. So but when he passed on, I wanted to get involved in marching the protests and have my voice heard. I even wanted my nephew 
was nine years old to be involved. However, when it came down to it, I couldn't because I felt that I wanted my voice to be heard longer than just in that moment of time. I wanted it to be heard long after I'm gone. And so, like I said, being in tune with my third eye and just being alone with God and talking with him and praying and meditating, I asked him, you know, what is it that I can do to, you know, help leave my mark in this world and have my voice being heard? As well as, you know, a long time ago, I prayed and asked God to allow me to be the one in my family to break the generational curse and create generational wealth. And so this is also tying into that as well. So that's how I was inspired to write the book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Another reason what encouraged me to write this book is the fact that I'm simply, I'm sick and tired of hearing people or racist people, if you will, say that, you know, racism isn't alive or if it doesn't exist or they don't see color. If you don't see that, then how about this? It does come with the disclaimer. It's intended for a mature audience only. It does contain sensitive content. Um, the book is written to inform and encourage thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. It's done through graphic and provocative illustrations detailing controversial deaths and events have occurred in America within the African American community. The way that I have presented this book, it's within four main categorized paradigms, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. Uh, and within those paradigms, there are sub-paradigms. It ties into, I guess, precedent and hypothetical paradigm. The issues you explore in your book are very important. How do you think things can be improved for the future, especially regarding police practices in America? So, well, first of all, the way that I think things can be improved for the future is to have conversations about these issues that we have, take knowledge and accountability for them. I have a paradigm that addresses that what if concept. If police reform was underway and they had to attend mandatory workshops about racial profiling and how to de-escalate a situation so that we can prevent ways, you know, or, or minimize the deaths of unarmed victims. And so that's the one way I think that we can improve the futures by just taking that, that small itty bitty step and having the conversations. So what other interests do you have? Oh, a lot. I love, for one, I love to travel. Other than that, reading, writing. I love watching Shark Tank. Before the pandemic, I did MMA cage fighting. I love spending time with my nephew. I love biking, ATV, anything daredevil type. <laughs> I'm all for it. So different. How can people contact you? Yeah, so um, if anybody's trying to get in contact with me, my main website is differenceworld.net, spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T-S-W-O-R-L-D.net. There you can find all of our other social media handles, our Facebook, YouTube channel, Twitter, Instagram as well as, you know, find out about our pre-sale and the book launch and other merchandise that we offer. Different in Houston, USA. Thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for having me. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to my audio interview I had with Nigel Beckles. Excuse me, Nigel Beckles. I keep missing out. Nigel. Nigel, that's his name. Uncle Nigel, that's what we called him. Um, yeah, I had a very good time talking with him on his show about my new book, what if, da 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 here it is, what if a controversial paradigm shift is available again on my website, differenceworld.net. It's also available on Amazon on paperback and ebook. But I'm going to be real with you. If you go to Amazon, you're going to pay a more, much more higher price. So go to my website, differenceworld.net, and you get your copy there. Okay. Also, please be advised that this book was written to inform and encourage thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America, and it's done through graphic but provocative illustrations. So, again, this book does come with a disclaimer. It's intended for a mature audience only, and so if you can't take this type of heat, again, I've been saying it long enough, so you guys should know what the risk comes with. So, again, um, it's for grown folks only. Just be advised. With that being said, big shout out to everybody who's been purchasing the book, who participated in the free sale, who has shared the links, uh, told people about the book, had me on their podcast shows. Truly, truly appreciate it. Again, um, I do do motivational speaking. or have participated in uh, keynote events or grassroots conversations. So anybody out there that would like to have me on their show, please go to my website and book me. I'm free of charge. Again, the website is differenceworld.net. And um, you can find out more information there. So other than that, don't forget whatever it is in life that you want to go after. You have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And then it will surely come to you. Difference well.
come and learn. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author different. Illustrations by Anastasia Arnold coming August 2021. Go to differenceworld.net.